Hello and welcome to Ule Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign. Then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. And so our card tonight is the Ten of Cups. Okay, and let's see what do these tea leaves have to say tonight. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can go ahead and hit that little bell when you do. And I'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. And it is free to subscribe. Okay. So this one's interesting. They all are, but... Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, I want to start right here. This one is interesting. It, it's hard to look at. It keeps going into two different things for me. Um, first, it looks like a like a person, um, maybe wearing a dress or a robe. You can see down here it's kind of long, and then up here's the head, and their arm is up. And I almost imagine they are blowing bubbles. Okay, so there is something very. Um, kind of whimsical, maybe kind of um, fun and quirky and, and magical about this person. We also have a th uh, 13 and we have a 27 right there. And so um, I feel like this is almost kind of a youthful person or at least a time when you think back on um, maybe that you were youthful, you felt youthful. Um, there was a little more of a carefree, uh, you know, I don't know. Um, maybe a bit wide-eyed and, and very excited to explore the world and, and um, you know, just kind of go out there in the, in the yard and, and run around in the grass with with your bare feet and blowing bubbles and, you know, looking at bugs and collecting sticks or <laughs> flowers or whatever. Um, just spending a lot of time out of doors, uh, really taking it all in and, and feeling very much a part of it. You know, I think when you're young, there is more of this ability to be fully in the space that you're that you're inhabiting and it doesn't feel so much like you're inhabiting anything but that you are um one of many parts of any system or uh, environment and um and so i feel like there is kind of this this uh remembering of how that might have felt and and maybe a longing for it as well but i do think that it really kind of um it this this co like collectiveness this um easily flowing emotions and feeling and impressions and sensations and everything uh with the 10 of cups it seems like it is very much there for you in place now, when I look at this a little further back, it looks like we have eyes and a nose and a mouth. And then this one kind of looks like eyes and a nose and a mouth. And it looks like it's frowning a little bit. And so I look at this and it almost kind of feels like um, there's this kind of lingering... Uh, I don't know, it's like kind of scary, kind of spooky, but it almost seems like, uh, it reminds me of like a Halloween kind of like jack-o'-lantern or something, but I feel like there's just 
this energy of somebody who is um, maybe quite eccentric or um, just very kind of very different. But I feel like they are almost like uh, quite gloomy, right? Kind of Eeyore-ish. And I, I feel like this is a person who really felt quite oppressive in a lot of ways. Like somebody who, whenever you were into anything, whenever you, um, you know, would, would as maybe as a child or a young adult, or even as an adult, um, you would get into something, pick up a hobby or, or something that you really were, um, kind of fixated on. Uh, this is the kind of person that would just kind of be, uh, putting it down and, uh, that's really, you know, not really worth your time. And what are you going to do with that? And, you know, like, uh, just kind of a naysayer, right? And so I just feel like there's just this kind of this energy um, that I don't know, you know, I feel like when we're young and we have, we encounter a lot of that, a lot of the kind of ho-hum, like, you know, gr like griping and, 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 pull like kind of cutting down the things that you um are excited to share and and um you know that kind of energy I don't know it kind of just it uh it tries to dim the light right um but I think that although maybe you you encountered this and and yeah it, it maybe made you grow up a little bit faster it um, made you a little more self-conscious and careful and and reserved about what you would share, um, which sucks. You know that that's it's not nice to do that to somebody, and it's awful to have it done to you. Um, so I do feel like as you have become an adult and and really fully come into your adulthood, um, you've always been pretty careful about how you speak to others. Um, regarding their, uh, you know, their interests, their loves, their passions. Like it's not really a place to be criticizing or critiquing people and, and um, you know, kind of uh, smothering their dreams. And, um, and so I think, you know, obviously it, it would have been awesome if you didn't have to deal with this. But I do think that because you did, um, it's actually made you uh, kind of a protector of dreamers, right? You are kind of the champion of of those who are creative and innovative and, and dreamy and and um, unrealistic, <laughs> you know, artists and and writers and and poets and you know just just absurdist like myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do think that, um, you know, it, and it fortified you as well, you know, and I think that in this time you are getting back to, uh, a little bit of this, this freedom of youth, right? I think really fully embracing, uh, your, natural instinct towards exploration, towards, um, really, really, uh, intense interests and in things. Instead of always trying to temper that, um, I think you're letting yourself kind of indulge it a little bit, really, you know, get into something new, a bunch of new things maybe. And I think that it's very healing for you. I think it's something that when you limit yourself, you start to feel quite starved <laughs> of um, just the enjoyment that we receive in finding something that really kind of, uh, you know, satiates the, um, that thing, you know, that we have as humans to the desire to um, to educate ourselves, the de desire to, um, get into that flow state, to lose ourselves in something, to have that kind of, you know, dopamine rush when, when we get to do our activity that we like, if it, you know, whatever it is. Um, I, today I was listening to two people, um, discuss, 
their love for puzzles. <laughs> I was eavesdropping and I just thought, wow, that's really cool. I like doing puzzles too, um, mostly on the computer. Um, but I, I just, I really enjoyed hearing just two friends talk about their puzzles and get really kind of geeked out about it. And, you know, and it, and it could be whatever it is for you. And, um, I think we all need to have our things and it, the more things that we have that we, um, really, f you know, kind of find, um, pleasure, uh, being able to do, um, then yeah, the better, the better life really is, you know? And, um, and so, yeah, if you, and here, the, if you have been lacking that, um, this is your confirmation that you should get out there and start finding something that you do want to, um, explore some kind of whatever it is, you know, um, I don't know. I can't think <laughs> some kind of game or, you know, some kind of, um, new hobby or interest or, uh, physical activity, you know, intentional movement, um, what, what have you? Well, and you know what? I can't think of, I, off the top of my head, I cannot think of anything particular. Um, but if you have anything to share, please definitely comment it. Let me know what you are interested in recently. Okay, so now we have this kind of really silly looking cat over here. You can see the ears, you can see the eyes and the nose. And now over here we have a cat with the eyes. And and this one looks a little more serious than, <laughs> than this one. But right between them I see a little heart right there. So I feel like this is you and somebody, maybe a good friend. I think that... Um, you know, this seems, this gives me the, um, feeling of a, a deep friendship. Finding somebody that is equally as independent as you, kind of into their own thing, um, not super reliant on other people's presence or, or the need to be around somebody, um, but chooses to be around, um, when, when they feel like it. And I think they often feel like they want to be around you and you want to be around them. And so definitely kind of these two feline, um, kind of, uh, the same kind of personality attributes in some ways. And I think this is a most wonderful, uh, kind of union. Um, probably not amorous. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't get the feeling that it is, um, I might be wrong though. There are quite, a f there's one, two hearts. And I think I saw another, oh yeah, there's another one. So there are hearts all over the place, but I kind of almost feel like this is maybe even somebody you've been friends with for a very long time. Like somebody you grew up with or went to college with or, you know, something like this. Um, I also see kind of two people running, one right here and one right here. So I almost feel like, there is kind of this almost bacchanalian um, energy, a kind of, um, you know, uh, dancing and, and um, you know, <laughs> ecstatic kind of movements and, and, you know, I don't know, uh, whatever they do at those bacchanalian gatherings. Um, which I guess I, what I equate to in these days, something like a festival or a rave or something like that. But, um, yeah. And I feel like there's just a freedom when you two find the time to be together, there is a deep sense of, um, relief, I think, because it's like, you speak the same language, they understand you. Um, you probably lived lifetimes together. This isn't your first. And up here I see there's a coffee cup. So I feel like there is um, really a sense of uh, making time to kind of have these casual experiences with each other where you're having tea, you're having coffee, you're meeting for lunch and um, just making sure that you maintain that. 
so that you can be together as, of, as often as your schedule allows. But I think it's something that is a priority. Now, I was looking at this and I'm like, is this saying my name? Because it looks like L E N O R, <laughs> which is my name. <laughs> I guess the tea leaves are talking to me. But it could be Lynn as well. Uh, we also have a square here. So there is a sense of finishing, um, a sense of everything kind of being uh, squared away, right? And um, and so I think <clears throat> this is kind of the end of some kind of cycle, a project, maybe something at work. And um, I feel like as this is coming together, I see both the uh, Ace of Cups, but I also see a falcon here. And we have a candle that is not lit. And so I think that as this is ending, there is a sense of relief. I feel like your cup is full. You're feeling pretty proud of yourself. Uh, now with the falcon, we have that real... Uh, you know, high flying, very perceptive. I think you're looking for your next thing, your next inspiration. And I do think that um, there's been a little bit of, with that candle not being lit, there's been a little bit of a blockage there. But everything is telling me it is kind of like a good time to indulge in that kind of childlike whimsy, but also in that relationship, that friendship, being there with somebody who you can really talk to. And I think through being able to communicate in the very specific way that you can with this person, it draws up deeper things parts of the psyche you're able to kind of you know unlock things that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have access to and I think it's really working through some emotions talking about things you maybe don't feel comfortable telling anybody else but you can really sit with this person and um relate on a deep level and you feel heard like they really listen to you they get you now, over here we have, um, it is a heart with an arrow going through it. We also have a person standing here. There's a heart next to them. So I feel like this is definitely, I mean, it may be somebody you're in a relationship with already, but this is somebody that... Um, there's a lot of attraction to you. And I feel like there's just really a deep urge to kind of um, put a, like bestow a lot of attention onto them, I guess. And I think that in some ways that you sometimes have rev reservations about um, showing too much interest or being too kind of locked in or um I don't know like almost like you you worry that they're gonna feel like um you're needy or um you're being possessive of their time and their and their um you know their attention and but I I feel like it's kind of just a thing that that you come up with in your mind like it's not the reality of things here I think this is a person that loves you and is very much in love with you um I think that you know um they probably enjoy spending a lot of time with you as much as you do and I think that maybe the problem here is that neither of you initiate as directly right there's a lot of passive hint dropping but it's not always like okay we really need to spend some time we need to make some time for each other we need to spend some time I'd really like to you know go do this thing with you or spend the evening just you and I or you know whatever it is and um 
So I think that, you know, the, and I challenge you to kind of be proactive about it. Um, just be very clear about what it is that you are hoping for or want, you know, and, um, and if you don't have somebody that you are, uh, and I know some of, uh, some of you, some of, I see some of us, but yeah, uh, some of you are single and you're happy and that's what you're doing and, um, or you're single and maybe looking or whatever, but this could also apply to, um, you know, being with yourself, really finding some time to do some of the things that you've been wishing to do, um, making some time that's just for you. Uh, maybe taking some of the lower priorities on your list and letting them wait so you can make some me time. Okay, so we have E7. E7, whatever that means. I keep getting this like, and it's funny because, um, I saw a pipe and smoke in here and I see a pipe and smoke here. And earlier I randomly got the like taste of tobacco in my mouth, which is weird because I don't smoke and I'm not around anybody who smokes. Um, I used to, um, but I, you know, I, I'm never around it really. And so it was such a weird thing. I was like, I just am, it's like mental thing, you know? Um, but now it makes sense to me because it was like the precursor to, um, this reading and I keep seeing this and I almost feel like there's somebody who used to have like a pipe, like a tobacco pipe or whatever. And hopefully I'm sorry, YouTube, please don't, <laughs> don't lower me in the algorithm for saying that word. Um, but yes, um, it, like a grandfather, maybe, um, but they, and I, or somebody, it doesn't have to be, it's just somebody who is important, it seems like they are, maybe they've transitioned, okay, um, and I'm, and I think, yeah, maybe this, we have, it looks like a J, and it could be a J-E, but we also have E7, so maybe, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure how that fits in, but um, maybe there was a J and an E or just a J. Um, but I feel like they're around. I feel like you've been thinking about them a lot. Um, maybe even dreaming about them. And I feel like that, and I feel like they had like a very distinct laugh too. Um, and I almost, am, and I'm thinking it's like, oh, because they smoked, you know, it was kind of, um, it was kind of more gruff sounding. Uh, and I think that this is somebody you just love so much and they are with you. They are with you. They definitely watch over you. Um, and so I think, you know, this comes through and I want you to know that I want you to know that that is there. Okay. Now we're going to do... Um, I have these, I have these other new cards I have not used yet. They're called the mystic, uh, the mystique of Magdalena or Magdalene. And they are from Cheryl Yambrock, Yambrock, I'm going to say Yambrock, uh, Rose. I'm going to say Cheryl Rose. There we go. I'm not going to mess that one up. Um, and they're oracle cards. I'm going to try them out. We're going to see, you know, how we feel about them. And um, I kind of miss the affirmation cards, but these ones are so pretty. They're so beautiful. And I'm definitely in that Magdalene. You know, we've been using the Magdalene um, or the other oracle cards that were the Magdalene ones. And I thought, okay, we've done those for a few weeks now. So we're going to try these. Now I'm going to stop where it feels right and I'm gonna go ahead just flip this over it says 
Joseph of Arimaeus. Or Mar Arimaeus. I think that's it, yeah. If you've... If you <laughs> I feel like I'm telling on myself. If you've watched my readings, you will know I am really bad at pronouncing words. Um, <laughs> I make up my own pronunciations. A lot of these, almost 100% of the words I see on here or when I'm reading these, I've read them all. Um, and this is true of a lot of things in my life. I've read them. I've never heard them out loud. Or maybe I have and I just have never said them myself. And so it just, um, yeah, so you just have to stick with me. <laughs> Be patient with me, please. Um, okay, so plant your intentions deep. Arimathea, that's what it is. Yes, Joseph of Arimathea. I was thinking, I'm like, I know the word. I like the word. I've heard the word um, even. I used to love watching all of those old biblical movies that were on like in the afternoon on Easter and stuff. So yes, definitely. Um, I've heard it. Plant your intentions deeply. Yeah. These are pretty. They are pretty. Definitely. 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 Okay. So, um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Sagittarius, I'm going to tell you I love you and I thank you for spending this time with me. I am going to admit to you as well that um, this is not my first. I started a Sagittarius reading and um, TT was in here quite like she would not stop. So I had to do another one. Um, so <laughs> if I sound a little kind of worked up here, it's because I'm coming down from ha having started a reading. Um, and it just fell apart. I could not focus. So poor TT, um, she's banished from the room tonight. I usually let her wander in here freely, but now she's, um, in bed with my husband and cuddled up. So she's happy. Um, but she won't be, <laughs> she won't be visiting. I just absolutely, I couldn't get focused. So Anyways, uh, yes, I love you. Thank you for spending this time with me. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. It is free to subscribe. If you'd be so kind as to like the video, it really helps the channel. It helps us get into the algorithm and recommendations and stuff. And... Um, if you, uh, want to leave a comment, please do. I read them all and they mean a lot to me for sure. Okay. So Sagittarius, I thank you. I love you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk in just a few days.